everybody good? Okay. Uh, let's start off. Uh, I'll just go ahead and address a couple issues that uh, currently uh, dealing with uh, with the program. Uh, I did uh, dismiss Adam Brandt from the football team. Uh, violation team rules. Some personal issues that he's going through, and uh, uh, just what we needed to do. And then also, uh, Daquan Isom has been suspended, and that would be indefinitely. Um, just um, did not report a situation that occurred uh, over a week ago, and uh, just found out about it today. And uh, players know that when something happens that shouldn't be happening, the first person they need to tell are the coaches, myself, and uh, that didn't occur. So. Uh, we're dealing with that situation uh, currently. So uh, that, and then um, coming off the game from Saturday, uh, there are some injuries that uh, I'm sure will be asked about. Uh, uh, Garrett Clark, um, fortunately, both Garrett and Jake will return. So that's encouraging. They're not season-ending injuries. But uh, we will not have either one uh, for this week coming up. Uh, and then we'll see where we're at the following week. Um, other than that, excited about the opportunity here to get ready for University of South Dakota. Um, I think this conference race is uh, really getting interesting, especially when you look at currently you got five teams that are two and three and two teams that are three and two. So you got seven teams right in the middle of everything that uh, a lot of stuff can happen here down the stretch. So um, there's still a lot of reason to play the game. and, and uh, be challenging, but that's the Missouri Valley. Open it up for questions. Yeah, he'll practice. Uh, he'll be working on the scout team, and and uh, again with coaching, uh, there's always things that are happening within the team when you have 105 football players. Uh, you know, you, there's constant discipline. I mean, it's just uh, sometimes you you just don't see it out in the public, and and uh, Unfortunately, you know, this situation is something that uh, warrants uh, public attention. And, and uh, so Daquan needs to learn the lesson, and, and uh, as do I many of the other players. I mean, it's, if something happens, uh, the, uh, the trust factor is extremely important here. And, and Carbondale is a small enough community. It's not, uh, you know, if we're going to find out, we will find out. It's, we just got to communicate that right away so we can handle it in a proper fashion and, and make sure that it doesn't become more than what it is, where unfortunately it's more than what it should be right now. And, and uh, so that will be the consequence. And how does Juan having those two kind of impact you guys offensively and defensively? And how do you see that thing focusing on that? Well, you address it right away, uh, what we're doing here, and we'll address that to the team tomorrow. And, uh, you know, you have numbers in football. So, I mean, you're always prepared uh, for injuries, for, um, you know, some opportunities where guys need to step up and get ready to play. Uh, you know, naturally, uh, we would like to have those guys available to play. That's not going to happen. Uh, so you just move on to plan B. And, and at the running back core, that's one of the reasons why we got the running backs that we do there. Uh, we got some good quality. Um, and then same thing on defense. Uh, fortunately, we're getting some people back on defense now that have been out for the past couple of weeks. Uh, Calvin Belts will be back, so you know he becomes more of a factor. Uh, Blake Matson, we're hopeful that he'll be able to get back into the mix um, also. So um, that's where you absorb that one. Mine was uh, 1980. I can tell you all about the game here if you got some time. It, uh, but the Dakota Dome is a very, uh, it's a different place to play. It's like a miniature uh, uni dome, and uh, it, it's nice. It, it's very, and they put a lot of money um, in the upgrade of that facility, but it's also pretty tight. Um, you can get run out of bounds and be running into uh, uh, a wall, uh, some padding. Same thing, catching a ball in the end zone. If you're going full speed, you'll probably run into the wall, <laughs> you know, just a few uh, yards in front of you. So um, everything's on top of you. The fans are on top of you. It can get very noisy. Uh, it's a difficult to go place to go and play. Um, when I was at the University of North Dakota, I mean, we probably we went a long time before we finally 
started winning at the Dakota Dome. So it's a it's a place you got to respect, and and I do think USD plays a pretty good game there. So, um, uh, but it's a fun place to play too. So that'll be our message. Uh, enjoy it. Yeah, I think playing inside in the dome is always kind of exciting. Um, so that's the approach we'll take. Yeah, that was the discouraging uh, part of watching film. Um, you know, the and the main difference in our game was the explosive. Uh, North Dakota was a state was able to uh, establish the explosive play, and uh, just watching that defensively, it's just uh, it's as simple as being out of place defensively. I mean, it's it's just uh, it's frustrating to watch. Sometimes I think uh, you, you may have players trying to do too much. Um, we're always talking about eyes, always talking about doing your job, and uh, that's what we needed to do a better job on Saturday was just not having that lapse where we were trying to do more than, than what we should. And uh, But that's what North Dakota State will do to you just because they hammer you and you're trying to run to the support of your teammate, but you still got to be disciplined enough to take care of your responsibilities, and that's where we got burned on the big play. So. Um, now, South Dakota will run a very similar offense. They, they will do the power game. They like to establish the run. So, you know, some of the lessons uh, hopefully we will learn from uh, North Dakota State that will help us uh, put together a, a uh, more consistent defensive game plan and, and uh, we just can't be out of position. And, uh, you know, offensively, we couldn't get the big play. Now, I'm proud of the guys that we had these extended drives. I mean, we had six scoring drives against North Dakota State, but three of them we settled for field goals, three were touchdowns, and we were establishing these drives of 13, 14, 16 play type drives. Well, that's usually what North Dakota State does, and, and we're the ones that usually score the quick ones, but uh, the role was reversed uh, on Saturday, and, and uh, you know, you, with this type of offense, you still want that quick score potential, and and we had some shots there too, and, and just didn't make the play when we when it was there, some missed reads here and there. Uh, so there was enough to watch on the film from uh, North Dakota State where we were in it. Uh, we had our opportunities, and uh, hopefully we learned from those situations. And how have you seen the type of run game change that uh, those running backs have kind of broken his arm a couple weeks ago, and now they've just kind of given him space? So um, what kind of rushing threat do they present? They're still doing the same um, philosophy. Um, it's uh, the old school eye formation. Uh, they got a good fullback, offensive lines, an experienced group. Uh, they got a lot of players returning. Quarterback is a big kid. He played against us last year, uh, 6'4, 220. You know, he's, he had a great game against North Dakota State. He's what made that uh, win possible when they went to North Dakota State. So, um, you know, they're going to be very deliberate in what they do. Uh, they have a great defense. I think they hang their hat on the defense and, and uh, they kind of play that Dakota style uh, football where they try to hammer you on offense, play great defense and just play the field position type game. Well, they, they, Again, defensively, they're good, and uh, you know he is a—he's um, just quick off the ball. Um, you know, he's a guy that you got to be aware of. Uh, again, with our play calling, we can't be in too many third and long situations or even second and long. Otherwise, you'll be at risk. Um, you know, I think what we do, and I always get asked, how do we have such low numbers on the sack total? Well. That's a big part of our passing game is just all the play action stuff that we're doing off of it. They got to be sharp on their reads. They can't be firing up field. So, um, you know, we need to be able to execute our offense to a high level. Now, are you concerned about just conceding that Seth Marbury and Arnie Smith are going to get the ball to Smith every time they're going to get the ball to Smith every time they're going to get the ball to Smith every time they're going to get the ball to Smith every style quarterback. Now, if we were running the veer option or if we were running the wing T, that would just be normal. And really, what Mark is doing, he's running those type of off 
offenses. And it's just uh, a lot of the reads he gets are the keep reads, and he's just going. He's taking the ball when he should be taking it. So um, that's where the throwback is. He's probably, and we're using him more as an option type quarterback, although a lot of the option reads that we have are based off of the throw. But that's really the type of quarterback that he is, and, and we're not afraid to run him because if you run the option, you got to run the quarterback. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he's a tough kid. Um, worry about it, yeah, all the time. That's uh, every hit he takes. Yeah, you, you know, you go wow. <laughs> so, um, but uh, he seems to thrive off of that. Um, he, you know, he kind of has that pullback mentality where he just, I think he's solid enough where, you know, he's been able to absorb those hits. Should be better. Um, he was limited, very limited this past week. Um, you know, had we needed to, you know, Sam Straub would have gone in. We had one play where um, Matt did go in, just did a handoff. But um, yeah, we need to get, you know, Matt McIntosh back into the action. Coach, this is the second straight year you've uh, had a player involved with sales of marijuana. Why, is, why do you feel it's such a recurring problem? Well, I think you just look across the country. It's a recurring problem within the society. It's in the culture. It's just uh, it's a concern. Um, we're testing our players constantly, uh, just trying to make sure that it is something that they know it's not an option. It's something they can't do it. And, and you get, uh, especially young players, uh, you don't know where they come from. Well, you do know where they come from, but you don't know the, the exposure that they've had. and and. Uh, it's just a one of those things as a coach that you know you got 105 players. You feel like you're the, the parent of all 105, and you're responsible for every single one of them. And and you just keep preaching and preaching, and, and you just hope they listen. But unfortunately, the, there's a culture that's out there, and even in Carbondale and SIU, that it's accessible. So that's the thing that you worry about. Oh, he's been disciplined. Like I said, there's a lot of stuff that's going behind, and, and he also knew that this would be the last straw type thing where there would be no second chances. And will, uh, will Perkins and Mixon get any action this, this week or from, from now on? Uh, I know Perkins has only had like three carries, and he you know, that killed his red shirt, right? Yeah, no, and that's, you know, again, you just don't know when you're going to need somebody, and, and we just felt that we were concerned at the depth of the running back spot to be able to maintain through the season. We didn't know what we were going to get out of Daquan either. So, yeah, Perkins becomes more viable. Uh, Mixon, too, becomes more viable. So and that's where that depth hopefully will pay off. What does, what does Mixon have to do to get into the, to the mix a little bit more? Sorry. Well, you know, again, it's just the, trying to find the right rotation. Now, you know, John Mixon was uh, – he had a disciplinary action a couple weeks ago too. So, again, not everything has always played out in front of the media. Um, and, and sometimes it's not getting your study table hours done. You know, you got to sit if you don't get your study table hours done. I mean, so those are things that, you know, you got your rules and your regulations and that you have within the team. And, and so – it's just one, you know, why somebody playing, not playing. You know, there's a lot of factors that go into it. But John uh, had a nice run. Um, his is just, uh, you know, he's available, so we're definitely going to use him. Uh, well, well uh, since we have this new uh, this new option offense, how does Straub look in practice from this this new system? Well, you know. Sam uh, is definitely a, a thrower, um, but he does have the ability. Now, when it's his turn, his style is going to be a little different. Again, I think this offense is flexible enough where you can adapt it to the style of the quarterback, so you don't have to just be locked in to one dimension. Now, right now with uh, with uh, <coughs> with uh, Ionati and McIntosh, those guys are both very good with the run, so they're games are similar. Now, if Straub came in, naturally things would be different. Does this sit down with what uh, Keon Wade, the linebacker? Well, I think all their linebackers, uh, they've played a lot of football. Um, you know, they've uh, just experienced very aggressive. Um, they, uh, 
like I said, the Northern Iowa game, uh, if you're a defensive person, you enjoyed watching it because both UNI and USD put a show on uh, defensively, just aggressive to the football, making tackles. Um, and they made a defensive switch, too. Uh, they were a 3-4 defense last year. Um, now they're a 43, so that's kind of allowed their linebackers to be a little more of a free flow type linebacker. So I think and that's why you're seeing the, the numbers that you're seeing, and, and uh, they're running that defense well. Do you think the longer travel to put the harder toll on the team? What's that? Do you think the longer travel to the Dakotas put the harder toll on the team at all? No, nah, it's actually easier because you fly. Uh, the worst trip, you talk about bad road trips, uh, would be Western Illinois. That's not fun at all. And, uh, you know, the crazy thing, I always tell people this, that a couple of years ago we played at Ole Miss. The trip to Ole Miss was shorter for us than our trip to Western <coughs> Illinois. So, you know, it's the bus trips that are the, the ones that uh, kind of take its toll on you because you're sitting in a bus for five, six hours. Um, our trip to Vermilion, we'll take a bus over to Marion, we'll get on a plane, an hour later we'll be in Sioux City. So, you know, that's a pretty simple trip, and, and uh, I think it should be a pretty comfortable trip. You, you kind of touched on it when you were in the Pacific Northwest message was this uh, right now um, you know you, you want to think you got a little control over your own destiny and I do think uh, you know we play two teams that are currently two and three that are on our schedule so that in itself can help elevate yourself as you go through and we need a signature win well you got Illinois State which is the number one team you know so you kind of like you need that a national attention where you raise some eyebrows they you know people saying this is a good football team well our three remaining games you know can allow us to get noticed and uh, then I think you got to look across the country um, there's a lot of these marquee team names that are at the 500 level right now so you're you're not seeing uh, all these teams with uh, nine and old type records uh, you know unblemished records that's why northern iowa can be ranked in the top 20 with a two and four record i mean it's just it's pretty balanced now across the the region and and so i don't know how it's going to work out i just want to give ourselves a chance to be considered uh, going back to when you said that players are out of position on defense on certain plays, does that mean they're out of place before the ball was snapped, or are they reacted wrong? Reacted. Um, <clears throat> for example, one play had bounced wide. Um, it was just uh, you, you looked, our, our corner just came in aggressive. He just came, crashed down so hard, and then the ball just bounced to the outside. It should have been right where he was at. and and he was out of position. So then it just turns into a foot race and, and our guys couldn't make the play. Um, you know, you look at the first run by the quarterback, our, our safety's coming up, he takes a bad angle approach to fill the hole, he overruns it, he cuts back, and then it turns into a foot race. But I mean, as far as having people in position, if I mean, that's the challenge of playing defense against a team that uh, you know, tries to outnumber you and outpower you, but you got to have your people at the point of attack. And and on a couple of those long runs, we just didn't have our guy at the point of attack. Uh, speaking of cornerbacks, will Tariq be able to play the rest of the year, or is he just name the game? Tariq is done. <clears throat> so yeah, he's done for the year. He's done for the year. Yeah, it's a it's a hip pointer, but it's a little more complicated than that. Yeah, and I, we played against him last year, so Earl didn't play against us last year either. So, um, you know, he's a familiar um, quarterback for us. Um, but just as he's a tough kid, uh, you know, he fits that offense well. Um, again, I was extremely impressed with how he led that unit against North Dakota State at Fargo Dome. Um, that second half, South Dakota just controlled the second half of that game, and that's why they won it. So. Um, he's, uh, he's a guy that 
you need to be aware of. And then do they, do they typically throw you know, further down the field, or they, they just keep doing this? No, it's the, uh, again, the power game. A lot of the power games off of play action. So you're, you're doing a lot of the boot boots, uh, the, you know, set up. You still got the deep ball threat. They'll take their shots on you. But um, they like to do the high percentage type games. You'll get people um, coming across the fly motion game. He does that. Um, there's similarities to things that we do that they do. Um, so it's a, it's a package that they, they got a lot of flexibility with it. So you just can't focus on one thing because they'll, they'll be able to mix it up and make you defend a few things. Oh, no, we knew it would put a lot of pressure on our defense. I mean, that's just, uh, I didn't look at the numbers with South Dakota, but going into our game against North Dakota State, you know, our, and that's why those numbers are sometimes exaggerated, because our defense has taken 139 more snaps going into last week's game than what North Dakota State's defense took. You know, so when you're getting that many plays that you're running, time of possession being, you know, only two, three minutes on a drive, you're going to put a lot of stress on your defense. So it's a, it's a little bit of the give and take. And the longer your defense is out there on the field, then the more likely that you're going to give up a few big plays here and there. So it's, it's a risk we were aware of. Uh, I think, too, you just look at the big sky and see some of their um, numbers that, I mean, there's some high scoring games there. but. We just felt this was a change. It's kind of the flow of college football right now, and, and um, it's something that I think we can get good at. I think we can uh, get the defense to complement it, and, and if you can do that, now you got a got a chance to be a pretty special team. So what is it, what is it about staying out of the shootout? Does your defense get three stops in a row? Or yep, the whole concept, get the ball back to the offense. Three and outs are critical. I mean, that's the thing. Uh, and that was our concern against North Dakota State, is if you can't get a three and out and they're doing a, a long drive on you, you know, that's going to keep your offense. And that hurt us. There's times where our offense was on the sideline way too long. Now, we didn't want the three and out being a quick score. You know, that was a negative, was that we gave up some quick scores that were no more than three or four plays. But, um, you know, it's, uh, it's a work in progress. But um, I think we can continue to develop it, and, and there's definitely things there, with, especially our region. I mean, we can recruit to this. So I don't know if we can recruit to the, the power game that, that the Dakotas have. Um, you know, that's kind of unique up there. I think we want to have a little more of a wide open um, attack type offense with the defense. Well, I'm just dealing with it today, so there's a lot of things that need to be resolved here yet, and have a visit with Daquan, and and uh, you know we'll we'll see. But the bottom line is the message has got to be sent to the team that if something happens, I need to be notified immediately. I wasn't. That doesn't sit well. That's one of those things that you just don't do as a player. So, um, you know, there's a chance he may not see the field this year. Oh, most definitely. That is a that can't happen. I mean, that can't happen, and that'll be conveyed to the team. And and for me to find out uh, by seeing in the newspaper, not good. Aaron Stig for the special round team. Oh, I haven't got that far down the road yet. The knees, so one is a kneecap type thing. Jake, he's always had a trouble with his kneecap coming out of out of joint. So, no, no. Uh, have you ever had a dislocated kneecap? I know what it is. Yeah. So that's what he's dealing with. So we got to let the swelling go down, kind of stabilize it, get it where it's not going to keep popping out. And then, uh, and then, uh, Garrett's more of a normal knee sprain, grade two. All right, thank you. Thanks,